Okay, <clears throat> I'm gonna answer you a question from the class about ohm meter. Some people in the class had this question and didn't understand this uh, this lesson. So let's go through it. An ohm meter allows you to measure the electrical resistance of a circuit or component. To obtain the correct readings, you must set the multimeter to the correct settings for the circuit or component you are attempting to measure. Set the multimeter so that you can measure resistance at 200 ohms. Now, this symbol is ohms here. This, these are the scales. The numbers right here, they scales. I got 20 million, 2 million, 200 million, I think that says, 20K, 20,000, 2,000, and 200. So I'm gonna set this to 2,200. Now it says, you must disconnect the circuit component from battery power before taking a resistance measurement. This is because the ohm meter uses its own source of voltage for taking resistance measurements. Now what I'm gonna do is measure these resistance. They tell me to measure, if I can find them. So what is the resistance of R1? So let's put the turn the meter on, turn it to a 200 ohm scale, I'm assuming this is R1 here. And I'm getting about four. Let's put 4.0 there. That's correct. Next one. How about R4? This is R4. See, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's go to R4. And it doesn't matter how you hook the leaves up. Right now I got positive, negative. But on the ohm meter, polarity doesn't count. Watch. See? No issues. I'm going to reverse the leads. Oops. I'm going to reverse the leads. You're going to get the same number. See? And all mean the polarity does not count. Doesn't matter. How about R7? Where's R7 at? Right here. That's 24 ohms. See, 24.0 is 24 ohms. All batteries have a certain amount of internal resistance. Put this back. All batteries have a certain amount of internal resistance. Are you able to measure the battery internal resistance with an ohmmeter? I don't think so. No, you can't. Let's go to the next one. Uh oh, look at this, look at this thing here. Three. If you need to make a, a very precise resistance measurement, you must take into account that most ohmmeters measure to an accuracy of 0 0.1. For example, the meter may indicate a value of 0 0.9 and 1.1 ohms, but the actual resistance of the component was one ohm. That means I can have a variance of either plus or minus of 0.1. Suppose R1 is 0 0.1 and R2 is 0 0.2 ohms. What resistance, sorry, measure the resistance of R1 and R2. Suppose R1 is 0 0.1 ohms and R2 is 0 0.2 ohms. Measure the resistance of R1 and R2. Okay, let's go over here. Uh, this is R1. That's point, point 0.2 to point 0.3. Write that down. 2.3. Point Yeah, about the same. If 
about the same number. Do you see? What do you see? No clear difference on the multimeter. According to the multimeter, R1 is greater. According to the multimeter, R2 is greater. I don't see no difference. If you need to make a very precise precise resistance measurement, you must take into account. I did this already. Okay, the picture the picture opposite shows a rare window defroster, an electrical diagram. Turn on the defroster by switching on the keys, the ignition key, and defroster switch. Is that it? Oh, right here. Oh, that's the switch. That's the key. This is ground, this is ground, this is pyro. I don't see the switch. Where's the switch? Where's the switch? That's the key. Where's the switch? Ground. Oh, that's the switch. <laughs> oh, that's a switch. That's the switch. All right. So there's the key. Here's the switch. Eh. Turn on the defroster by switching on the ignition key and the defroster switch. All right. Here's the switch. Oops. Sorry. Here's the key. Here's the switch. The real one of the defroster draws 7.5 amps. Test the defroster ground circuit with an ohmmeter. Is the ground okay? You can drag what? You can drag the meter out of the way to view the wiring diagram. Okay, so this says power here, that's the key, that's the switch. That's the defroster, and this is ground. So I'm assuming this is the ground for uh, this. Let's see. I think that's the ohm meter here. Let's see if that works. Ground. I'm assuming this other one is ground. 97 ohms. If I did it right. Yes, in spite of the possible measurement error, the value is still low enough. No, the value is much too high. Inconclusive. You cannot determine whether the wire or connection is good of ohm meter. I go with this one. A ohm meter is not used on a live circuit, that's why. Suppose the contact resistance in the ground is, ground cable is 0 0.12 ohms. How much voltage loss is there on the ground cable with the rhythm frost to switch, to switch on at 7.5 amps? What? Suppose the contact resistance in the ground cable is 0 0.2 ohms. How much voltage loss is there in the ground cable with the rear defroster switch on at 7.5 amps? Hmm. Well, that makes no sense. Let me see this. What kind of is the ground cable? Sample comes on. Alright, that's how they doing it. They taking 12, 0 0.7 ohms, multiplying it by 7.5 amps gives me voltage. How much voltage loss is it? So they don't ohms law. Ohms, 7, 0 0.2 ohms multiplied by 7.5 amps gives me. Point nine. That's how they doing it. What is the correct way to check the ground cable? Measure current, measure calibrating on by using the voltage and voltage drop. The best way is voltage drop. 
with the circuit on. I always throw a voltage drop with the circuit on. Alright, check the voltage drop across the ground connection of the rear defroster system and turn it on. It's on right now. So I'm doing a voltage drop. Get to 20 volts. I'm going to put this here. And I'll put this here. That's, that would be a lot. That's the ground circuit. I don't know if that's the ground circuit or not. That still would be a lot. So I'm looking, I'm trying to find a ground circuit. And the ground circuit should be, this is, this is the key. That's the switch, which is this. This is the resistor, this. Oh, the ground circuit is number two. I'm doing it wrong, okay. The ground is number two. What is two? That's ground. See here, it's two to the ground side. I got two. And this is ground here. That's a lot. 1.9, that's a lot. Let's see if that's right. Oh, wow. So yeah, uh, totally right. Connect the black mesh pro to a negative terminal of the battery. I'm on a negative terminal battery. And the red method to, to point 0.2 of the rear window. Oh, I'm on a switch. That's why I made a mistake. I'm on a switch. That's here. I made a mistake. I was on the switch and not the motor. That's the window here. Yeah, this was the switch. I didn't look at what happens here. I was right here. That's the switch, which is this. And that's two, which is this. This is the defroster, which is this. And two is the ground circuit. This is ground. This is the two for the defroster. I put it at the wrong spot. So the answer is actually 0.97. And that's, that's what it's supposed to be. I knew that 11.9 volts was high. I knew that couldn't be right. Let's move it back over. You have found out that there's a contact resistance in the earth ground. Now a lamp has been added and uses the same ground circuit with the contact resistance. This is the contact. This is the switch. I'm assuming this is the contact. Cross the switch. Check the operation of the lamp when the rear window heater is on and off. On. Off. On. Off. Now look at them. Now look at this. Look at the intensity of this light off on switches off look at it switches on look at it check the operation of the lamp when the rear window heater is on and off which statement is true the light is brighter with this with the rear window heater switches on that's not true the lamp is dimmer when the rear window heater is on that's true eight what is the lamp dimmer? Sorry. <clears throat> Why is the lamp dimmer when the rear window defroster is turned on? The voltage on the negative terminal of the lamp increases, increases when the rear window heater is switched on because there is less current flowing through the lamp. The voltage on the positive terminal of the lamp decreases when the uh, rear, window, rear window heater is switched on because this is less current flows through this lamp. The resistance of the lamp increases when the rear window heater is switched on because of this less current flows through the lamp. I'm going with this one. No. 
Now, the reason why is this is, this one just says, this is actually hooked up. This this is hooked up to the ground side of the circuit. So it had nothing to do with the voltage side. This is actually unwanted resistance on the ground side. So when a rear window, when the rear window heater is switched on, the current through the ground circuit and contacts increases, uh, resistance increases. Because of this, the voltage on the negative pole of the lamp increases. The voltage drop across, therefore, the current through the lamp decreases. Less current means the lamp lights up dimmer. In other words, they have high resistance on the ground side and has a high voltage drop. And, it's, and it was found with a high voltage, you can find it with a voltage drop. That's it. I hope this answers your question. I'll see you in class tomorrow.